Hey everybody, welcome. I'm just doing a Facebook Live today to talk about something that a lot of us health professionals deal with, and that's the erratic, inconsistent clients who, you know, you may give them the work that you know will help them be better physically, help them lean down, help them build more muscle, have more energy, think better. You give them simple tips, but for some reason they don't follow through. So I recently had a conversation with another health professional about this very specific topic, and I've got some information to share with all of you, and as well, we're gonna open it up for anyone else that might have anything to contribute to the conversation. So once again, for all of you that are joining, welcome. I'm here to talk about inconsistent fitness training clients that don't get results, what's going on, and what to do about it. So the first thing is, if you are a health professional, and you're beating yourself up. Maybe you've got a client you've been working with for a long time and you're beating yourself up about their lack of results. I just want to let you know, first of all, uh, that it's not the end of the world. Okay? It is totally okay if that's the case. And here's why. Although they may not be getting the obvious changes on the outside, they may not be decreasing their body fat or increasing their strength at the rate that you're hoping for there may be some non-obvious ways that you could be benefiting them. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, we all know people who uh, want to be better, and they say they want to be better, but they keep sabotaging their eating plan, or they don't lose weight because they're not making time for exercise. So just give me a like or a heads up if you know somebody like that. And uh, the one bit of advice that I like to give health professionals in regards to the people who you know, communicate they want to change but never end up changing is that sometimes the fruit has to be ripe before it falls from the tree. And what I mean by that is sometimes people have to suffer more. I know it sounds cruel, but sometimes people have to suffer more before they're really ready for the sacrifices and before they're really ready for change. So sometimes our goal is to actually make people aware of, make them more aware of the discomfort and displeasure in their life that they're creating through their thoughts and actions. So sometimes I'll just ask a client, okay, you know what? You made a promise to yourself that you would eat healthy. You made a promise to yourself that you'd exercise. You haven't followed through on either. How's that working out for you in life in general, breaking these kinds of promises? Has it compromised your relationships in any way because you're under more stress? Uh, do you feel more tense and anxious? Is it compromising your confidence and how good you feel at work? So a lot of our job is to actually make people a little bit more aware of their suffering so that they are ready for change. You know, there's a saying that sometimes people have to feel like they're hitting rock bottom a bit before they're ready to take a new direction in life. Uh, they don't necessarily have to hit rock bottom, but we can have them imagine what rock bottom is going to feel like in order to then create a wake up call before we create any permanent change. Or anything like that. Uh, HN, welcome. Marilyn, Philip, Max, everybody, welcome to it. Welcome. Today I'm talking about uh, clients that are inconsistent and erratic with getting results, what's going on, and what we can do about it. And I'm speaking from my own experience in terms of this situation. So, one of the things, once again, is sometimes people need to suffer more. So, we need to make them more aware of the suffering that they're creating so that they're willing to consider a new direction for their life, okay? Now, the other thing to consider is that you may actually be helping them in many non-obvious ways. A lot of times, people think in very, they think inside the lines too much when they're trying to define what they do for a living. A lot of personal trainers may think, you know, I help people get strong and burn fat for a living. On the surface, that might be what you do for a living, but in actual fact, you're going to be doing a lot more than that. At times, you may be a nutrition expert. You may be a life coach. You may be a relationship counselor for a lot of these people. You're going to have to wear many hats when you're a health professional. That's because people need a guide in life, and health has become the new religion. Religion, unfortunately, doesn't have the same influence it's had at earlier stages in human history. So people are looking for that guidance and support for life's problems, and they're turning to health professionals. And they're putting health professionals on the pedestal that they would have otherwise re rever reserved for the clergy, priests, and the holy members of society in the past. So that's why they're looking for solutions and all these other aspects. So one of the things to consider is that 
you may not be meant to actually be helping a client achieve whatever physical goal it is that they've communicated. That might be a little bit of a facade. They might be looking for something else instead. Here's why. How many people think it's cool to tell people that you see a shrink? Something to think about. There's a bit of a stigma to it. But how many people think it's cool to say, you know, I've got a personal trainer and we do mental toughness? So what happens is a lot of times people have psychological needs and based on the stigma of seeking out that obvious psychological solution, they're doing things like engaging a personal trainer because they want to experience that human connection. One of the things to think about is try not to judge your clients prematurely in terms of why they're actually therapy is definitely cool. Try not to judge their, your clients in terms of what they're actually going through because you know you may not know that what your client has is that they may get yelled at at home everyone may boss them around may make them feel very little and they really need that hour in which somebody can lift them up and believe in them and walk out of there and feel like they've been healed in many ways that might be why they're coming to you and that's no less admirable to be able to help somebody with that than to be able to help them lose a few percentages of body fat. So try not to, what I would say is, a lot of times people's pain and suffering comes from selfishness. And we as health professionals may have our own selfish preferences on what we, we want the outcomes to be when we're working with a client. We may selfishly want our clients to lose weight and be a before and after model because it might reflect well on us to be able to have evidence of our services. We might want them to have some really strong lifts in the bench squat and deadlift so that we can brag about our client roster and what they're doing. So once you learn to kind of be able to release some of these selfish preferences, then your suffering with these kinds of clients starts to dissolve. So once again, when in doubt, I say that your selfishness is the cause of your suffering and if you want to dial it back far enough, you'll find it's the root cause behind just about every suffering that you encounter in life. Selfishness. And I challenge you to examine yourself in your own life and to see if you can find examples of that ringing true for you. So one of the other things to think about when you have a client that's kind of erratic and inconsistent is ask yourself, is it possible that you might be helping them in ways that you're not even aware of, okay? Is it possible you're helping them in ways you're not even aware of? And an example of this is I have a trainer I was recently speaking to, the client was not achieving any of their physical goals, but the client confessed to the trainer that they feel like they're ready to start dating again, all right? This is really huge because what's happened is the trainer has inadvertently helped the client develop the confidence and self-efficacy to be able to pursue something that they didn't, that they were a little bit fearful of in being able to create a relationship in their life. The trainer may not have been aware of this, but that's a huge role. Body fat will come and go, strength will come and go, but being able to help somebody find love in their life can have a lasting huge impact. Very powerful for the legacy for that person and for yourself. So one of the things to always ask yourself is, is it possible I may be helping this client in ways I'm not aware of. Once again, you can be that one or two hours a week in which somebody really truly feels good about themselves. You might be building them up in other ways you're not even aware of to have a more profound impact than just being able to bicep curl a little bit of weight. Try not to think of yourself as small as you might be and try not to put your profession and your impact in a little box because you can have such a much more profound impact than that. You don't even know the limits of the impact you're going to be having on these clients. So once again, if you just joined, welcome. I'm talking about erratic clients, inconsistent clients, what's behind that, what my experience has been. First of all, I have a saying that I always tell people and trainers that I'm mentoring, and that's that sometimes the, the fruit has to be ripe before it falls from the tree. So sometimes our clients have to truly be ready for change. A lot of times I can speed up that ripening effect by making them more aware of the suffering they're experiencing in their life so that they're ready to consider new directions in their life. However, sometimes it has nothing to do with the physical outcomes. Sometimes your clients are seeing you 
for different needs, psychological needs of the personality that you might not be aware of. Maybe it's not what you signed up for when you got into fitness training as a profession, but here's where you are. And as many of us trainers have come to find out, there's a lot more hats we're expected to put on. Hi, Alexa. Hi, Nicole. Uh, yeah, this, is, this is why knowing a client's why behind their goal is critical, even if they don't know it yet. Totally, totally agree. Actually, one of the things I do to kind of get a backdoor glimpse at what a client's goal is, usually there's a surface goal. And I'll just say, you know, what's your main goal or priority when it comes to your physical body and health? They're going to give you an answer. And a lot of times that answer is tainted by what they're expected to say. But then I follow up once we've developed some rapport and comfort, I follow up a few minutes later and I just say, you know, in order to understand your motivations better, are you okay with answering a couple questions that might be a little bit uncomfortable? but will serve your best interest in the end by helping me understand you better. Every client says yes, but the main thing there is they've given me consent to ask them something personal. Then I'll ask them, you know, if you were to do everything right and totally commit to your goals and your discipline 100%, what would be the best possible outcomes for your life one year from now? Here's where I find out what the real goals are. It might be that they want to run a 10K or that they want to go downhill skiing their kids or something like that that's where I find out what the real goal is because a lot of times they're not even ready to communicate that at the beginning hi Jana nice to see you Nicole Matt Savoy welcome uh, so then the other thing I'll ask them is imagine you were totally let yourself go and not try what would be the worst possible outcomes for your life say in five years from now now I'm going to get another very real goal that's beneath the surface. It might be, you know, that I'm going to get a heart attack like my dad did and die before me, or it might be that I'll end up in a wheelchair, or it might be that I'll be a fat loner. Whatever it is, now you're getting the real carrot and the stick. Those are the secret goals, and that's my way of getting about that with clients in order to understand them better. So that really helps us to understand their deeper motivations. Sometimes we just have to dig a little bit deeper. A lot of times they'll give us their goals on the surface, but that's like painting over dirt. We actually got to go deeper than that to find out what their true motivations are. So once again, if you just joined, I'm talking about erratic and consistent clients and what's going on with that situation and how to look at it a little bit differently. Once again, one way to look at it is you might be helping them out in non-obvious ways, building up their confidence, building up their courage, building up their self-esteem so they can pursue other things in life. Uh, you might just have to be with them until they've experienced enough suffering that they're willing to consider new directions for their life and finally commit. I will actually tell clients this, especially when it comes to dietary change. They'll want to change everything they're okay with changing, but they won't want to change the thing that's actually holding them back, whether it's breads or whatever it is and I'll tell them I'll be like I've been here before and here's how this story plays out you're going to suffer for the next three months you're going to train train hard you're going to complain you're not getting results and then you're finally going to be open to following my advice and usually what they'll say is okay well I'd rather forego those three months if I can and maybe I'm ready to make that change now so those are some different things to consider now the other thing to consider is as a coach as a coach, you're going to have a lot of clients in your life and they're there and they're sticking around. But what they're waiting for is for you to acquire some wisdom that you may not have just yet. And I'll think about this for a minute. Have you ever gone away and taken a course or chatted with another health professional and picked up some pearls of wisdom then been able to take it back to your existing clients and been able to solve riddles that you've been struggling with for a while? Has that ever happened to you? Where you've been able to learn something and that wisdom was able to help you make a breakthrough with a client. Okay, so a lot of times these clients are waiting for you and they're waiting for you to come into your own and develop and become the best version of you. So what I would say is if you have a lot of these clients that are kind of inconsistent and erratic, I would ask yourself, what do you need to do personally as a coach to become a better version of you? What aspects do you need to learn about? What wisdom do you need to gain in order to potentially round out your service offerings and be able to offer more to these people? Because they may actually be waiting for you. So that might be some books you've been putting off reading. Maybe it's some courses you've been wanting to take, a conference you've been looking at going to. 
I would encourage you whenever, the more you find this in your career, I'd encourage you to look at yourself and think, how can I be better? And what you'll find is the answers to these riddles or clients will come to you in the most unpredictable of ways. I know that it's come to me all the time taking courses where all of a sudden the instructor will go off on some rant about something that seems completely random, but it is absolutely what I needed to hear to help one of my clients make a major breakthrough. So what I would encourage you to do is if you have these inconsistent erratic clients, I would encourage you to look at yourself and ask how can you be better as a coach? Because you're the vessel they're looking for, for that wisdom. You just may not have put that wisdom into your bodily vessel just yet. So I'd encourage you to get out there on your journey and be better and be able to build the wisdom that can help you properly guide these people. They're waiting for you in many ways. The main thing here is that when you've got these inconsistent erratic clients that you don't look at it as a bad thing. Either they need to suffer more, either they're there to help you out in many ways, they're there to help you with virtues of character. Think about it, when you have a client that's not getting results, does it help you strengthen your patience? Absolutely. And does patience help you be a better person and a better coach? Does patience help you be better in your relationships? Does patience help you be better in your career? Does patience help you be better when coaching all these other people? Absolutely it does. That's a gift for you from these inconsistent clients. When you have an inconsistent client, does it help you with humility? Absolutely it can. We can't help everybody all the time the way that we want to be able to help them. And if you're more humble, does that help you in your relationships? Does that help you in your career? Does that help you at work? Does it help you with other clients? One of the things is, I think that one of the greatest things that gives longevity to any health coach or professional is humility. I think that will give your career more longevity than anything else. Humility turns people off more than ego, more than somebody that's putting their own needs first. So try not to be your own needs first when you're dealing with your clients and think, you know, I need X many clients bench pressing over 300 this year. I need X many clients doing a show so I can throw the testimonials up and get more business for me. I would encourage you to just keep an open mind and just go with the flow and surrender to the flow of the clients that are coming into your life and the unique opportunities and adventures that they're there to present to you. So where does all this lead us to? Basically, one of the things is that uh, we're all in this journey together as health professionals. We don't really know what we do, really. We think we do, but we don't. And none of us really knew what we were getting into when we got here. We didn't realize how many clients would have problems that there are no known solutions out there. This isn't really a linear career. It requires a lot of intuition. It requires a lot of creativity. And we have to always be getting better all the time in order to be able to solve this never ending series of unique challenges that clients bring to us. It's really quite, uh, it is really quite remarkable that when you help clients overcome their goals and achieve success, that you end up with clients that have entirely different sets of challenges. It's not like you're seeing the same types of client challenges over and over again. This isn't like the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. What you're going to notice is that once you're really good at solving one type of challenge, all of a sudden a new type of challenge is gonna start consistently showing up in your life. Whether that has to do with you know helping clients out with nutrition a lot, then all of a sudden you master that, now you're getting people with shoulder problems, or now you're getting people with fibromyalgia or something else. You'll notice that uh, as you continue down this journey in your career, that it's almost like this is being set up. It's almost like all your clients are set up strategically in a way to entertain and educate you in your own development. And I encourage you to look at it that way and always look at yourself and ask where can you become better and how can you enhance your own growth and wisdom to be able to provide solutions to these people in your life. So once again, if you're here and you joined Carl, Brent, uh, Cameron, Lee, welcome. Once again, I'm talking about erratic, inconsistent fitness clients uh, that personal trainers often feel a little discouraged about and talking about what it means in my experience and how I kind of look at those situations. And basically, you know, to summarize some of the things I've said here today, a lot of times when it comes to change, people need to suffer a lot until they're ready 
to face change. Change can take a lot of courage for people. And sometimes they may need to hit rock bottom, but sometimes you can get them to imagine rock bottom. That's what I do is I try to virtually take them to the rock bottom so they don't have to actually live it out and have permanent repercussions from it. So I'll ask people, you know, what would be the worst possible outcomes for your life five years from now if you were to just totally let yourself go? Or if you were to continue the way you are, what's the worst possible outcomes for your relationships? What's the worst possible outcomes for, for your health? What's the worst possible outcomes for your career? Those are three big things to hit people with. We know people have really good imaginations when it comes to imagining bad things and creating fear. So just try to use that as a tool to motivate them. That would be my advice. The other thing to consider is that you might be helping people out in non-obvious ways. You might be there to be a companion in their life because let's face it, this magical mystery of life that we're all in, this game of life thing that nobody really knows, uh, it can be overwhelming at times to say the least. And a lot of times people just need a cheerleader. They need a corner man or a corner woman to be there to be able to support them and be there to guide them and help them navigate this unknown territory. And that might be your role. It might be more than just spotting them on the weights and talking to them as they warm up. Your role might be to be the guide to take somebody through this mysterious territory. And you may be helping them in non-obvious ways. You may be giving them courage to pursue relationships, courage to pursue that job they've always been dreaming of, courage to pursue some other challenge in their life that they just haven't been able to face yet. So, and you may not even be aware of it. Sometimes I've met up with clients and they told me, uh, former clients, and they told me years down the road that I helped influence them, make some major change in their life. Uh, and they just wanted to let me know retroactively that I did that. I had no idea at the time. So the key is to just drop your selfish preferences on how you want every client interaction to go with and go with the flow of what's unfolding in your life because you may be having influence on these people in the most beautiful and unpredictable ways. So just be open to all of that and ask yourself, is it possible you may be helping them out in ways that you don't even understand? Is it possible that maybe you're that one hour in the week in which they feel lifted up and they feel like somebody believes in them and that gives them the strength to carry on? You don't know one way or the other, so I'm just asking you to consider before you get discouraged, before you consider giving up on a client, just consider the fact that you may be helping them out in one of these ways. And the other thing to think about is if you have all these clients that are surrounding you and they have all these problems that you're not able to solve, maybe it's time for you to ripen and for you to grow and learn and develop in your own way and move forward with your own progress so that you're able to help these people out. So once again, take extreme ownership over the situation, assume the answers are out there and that you need to move forward with your own developmental journey in order to help these clients out. Read a book, take a course, go to a conference. There's lots of great options out there. Move forward with your own journey to be able to help these people out. Once again, I'm Brendan Fox. If you, uh, if you just joined in, welcome. And uh, I'm sorry, because I'm probably going to be logging off pretty soon. Uh, Etchen, I am your cheerleader as well, buddy. You know it. Uh, Philip, thank you. Greetings from Siberia, from Serbia. Excellent English, by the way. Really proud of you on that one there. And good good to hear from you again and uh, tell everybody back in Serbia I said hi and hopefully uh, I'm back there soon again to meet up with you all and be able to share some time and work together and help each other become better. So once again, Brendan Fox, and I'm talking about inconsistent clients, clients that aren't getting results. Uh, it's not a problem. It's not something to be embarrassed about. It's an event that's designed to help you grow and designed to help others grow put your selfish preferences aside, drop the ego, embrace humility, and many adventures await you. That is my words of advice to you tonight. Hopefully that's been interesting and helpful to all of you. Every single one of you who are on here right now or any single person who's watching this uh, being replayed, I just want to let you know I'm rooting for all of you in the game of life because you've taken time out of your schedule to join this discussion so that we can all work together like a big group project a group project called Team Humanity, where we're trying to help people through these struggles and challenges and work together. We're all bonded by our mutually shared struggles through life's challenges. But you know what? A lot of these problems are a lot easier when we work on it together. Here's some of my thoughts and insights. I encourage you to share some of your own. Rooting for you all in the game of life. Till next time.